praise the Lord. I want you to turn to uh, the book of Acts, chapter 2. How many knows uh, what the Acts chapter 2, um, um, what is it? Well, we all know what Acts chapter 2. How does it start out? Anybody remember? When the day of Pentecost was fully come. Now, I'm going to preach this morning, and I, I really felt like uh, you know, I, I was going to preach this Wednesday night, but we had a testimony service, and and uh, uh, I didn't I didn't want to just can this sermon. I felt like and this morning I felt more like it preaching it than I did the other night. So, and I'm going to preach to us, and and I, I uh, but they, these young folks are staying, and I, you know, I I had, I thought they need to hear this, but I didn't want to. You know, you don't want to call. You say you're going to preach good? <laughs> you know better than that. I just I want to talk to you about all of us about this right here. I want to preach about Thanksgiving, Pentecostal Thanksgiving. Now, I I want you to you'll understand how many knows what what it meant by the day of Pentecost. Now, what what when we when somebody t- tells you what what is Pentecost? I know what most of us would say. We'd say, well, that's the day the Holy Ghost was poured out and the church began with the breath of the Holy Ghost, as we know it. How many would say, how many knows that? But the Holy Ghost had not been poured out and this term, the day of Pentecost, uh, so Pentecost had to mean more than the day. But what did it mean? I'm going to tell you here in a minute. and uh, But I'm going to talk about uh, uh, now, we're living in a society. Let me say this before I read Acts 2, and if you want to turn to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 16. But I, I, want, I want us to hear this. This is real important. We live in a society that feels like the world owes them something. Don't we? We do. We, we feel like, and, and that is a, that is an ideology that has grew over, but really, the world don't owe us anything. Really, they don't. We, we're in debt. We're in debt. Listen to me now. Now, now, young people, I'm glad there's some here because usually it's just us seasoned citizens. Is that the way you say it? Seasoned citizens. And, you know, but now, young people, you, here is something you'll be tempted to do. You, you, especially, uh, and you know, people talk about kids being spoiled. Now, now, to spoil a kid is to do something that causes them to be rotten, which is, you know, you spoil them by not uh, disciplining them when they do wrong things. Now, you, you're not going to spoil a child by loving a child. You can't love them too much. You can't. Because really, when you don't discipline them, you don't love them. Isn't that right? You young people say amen here now. Huh? <laughs> I love these guys, I'm telling you. But, you know, but young people, and, and us elders too, we need to, we need to understand that, that really, uh, we're, we are in debt as soon as we get on this earth. Because for one thing, our dear mothers have, have carried us around in the womb for nine months or ever how many weeks? What is that? How long is it? 36 weeks. Is that what it is? Ladies? 40? Okay. Varies, right? But it's been a long time. And then that mother, listen, has to go to the valley of the shadow. I mean, many before epidural. 
and bear those children. With, with the, the Bible calls them travail. So when we first see the light of day, we're in debt to a lady. Hey, right? And then I, I remember, I remember when Nathan was born and over at the old clinic hospital and you know, we, I'd saved a little money. We didn't have insurance. I'd saved a little money with the help of my friends. And, and I had tucked away for, for him to be born. And, you know, to pay for him. How many knows these critters cost? Huh? Now I've got my money out of I, uh, Nathan, I both. I, my kid, I've got my money out of them. Now they've carried wood and split wood and, done whatever I told them to do, and they're still doing it. Don't y'all, don't y'all appreciate that? Huh? I do. And uh, But I remember going up there, and, and uh, they went in, uh, my wife, and now this is what they told her. Now, it says, Sheila, this is for your day now, so you're not responsible for this. But they went in there, and they told my wife, we have to have $1,500. That's how much it was back then before you can take this baby home. You ever hear of a hostage? He was held hostage. Well, I I went over to my savings account and I and I got my money and I went down there and bailed Nathan out of the hospital. So he's indebted to me, isn't he? Huh? Now you say, well, well what? Now, now here's what happens if we don't have a thankful heart. Then we sin. I'm hearing some necks creaked a little, but I'm not hearing many amen. I say we we have sinned if we are unthankful. Because the world doesn't owe us anything. Now we're we're in this uh, we feel we feel like and I'm gonna preach I'm gonna preach on Thanksgiving here. And Pentecost. But we feel like, what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, we feel, uh, what do they call the, the uh, different programs in America? They, people feel, what's the word I'm thinking of? Entitled. They even call them entitlements. Are you listening to me? And I'm, I'm not getting off on that. I really think that people are poor and can't do no better for themselves. Those that can do better... Needs to help them. Right? And you know, the government ought not have to tell us to do that. The Bible tells us to do that. Isn't that right? And you know, the reason the government has to do it and the majority of our of the expenditures of the government goes to entitlements. Now, now if you've paid into the Social Security, that I think you're enti- that it, you are entitled to get what you put in that. But we have developed, and I'm going to tell you something. When a when a world lives on the the uh, the idea that somebody always owes me something, then they're they're not going to survive very long. Because there's no such thing as a free lunch. Somebody has to pay it. Y'all not getting this, are you? Amen. And this translates to to the church. It starts with the church, actually. It start, now look, you watch a young person. Young people, listen to me. Now, you, you don't need to get the wrong idea. If you're healthy and vibrant and have a nice color and you get, and you eat good and you've got good clothes and you, you've got such good clothes that you're on the cutting edge of the style conscious society and you get every new thing coming along and all you have to do to get more is whine a little bit. And you never take time to say thank you. You're a sinner. That's why you have no fruit of the Spirit in your life. That's why you're obnoxious. That's why you're not any help around church. Because you're a sinner. Sinners can't be help around church. <laughs> When we 
we think, think I'm going to read my text in a minute, but this come on me this morning. I can't get it off of me. I've got to preach to you. Now, now, let's just start out. Let's just start out. Amen. Next Sunday, they'll be begging you to go to class. You watch them. They'll be pointing toward you. Mm-hmm. Well, let's just start out. Let's go young and old alike. Let's just start out. I've already mentioned our parents. Can we go to heaven being ungrateful to our parents? Can we? Can we be good citizens? What about it? What about what about our our teachers? What well, after our parents? What about uh, should we? What about the things in our life that people have done? What about the people that taught us to read? That taught us to pray? That were alike to us? Should we be thankful for that? Huh? What about? Brother Kenny, what kind of workers would we have if everybody was thankful for their job? Huh? If everybody was thankful. What if we were just thankful for the health we had when we lost our job, thankful for the health we had and and the intellect we had to be able to fill out an application and and a, and a strong enough back, Brother Mitch, to, to carry the load that somebody needs to carry. Hey, Matt, what if we were just simply thankful for the health that God had given us to function in this world? Are y'all with me? And I've not even got to the biggie yet, have I? What if we were thankful, Sister Wilma? You can help me with this. What about if we were just thankful for every good night's sleep? Huh? Am I... Am I preaching right, Brother Noah? Huh? What if we were thankful for just a... What if we were thankful for just when we had Thanksgiving dinner, all the kids were home and getting along? Mostly. Are y'all with me? Y'all not with me, are you? Hey, man, I'm going to preach to you. Now, you know what Pentecost means? What's the word mean? Means what? Fifty. Now, what has that got to do? Y'all know where I'm at, don't you? You know what I'm talking about. The word penna. See, in the Old Testament, God commanded many feasts in his people Israel and special days. He started with the Sabbath. He said, remember the Sabbath, seventh day, and keep it holy. And and then he, he extended from the Sabbath, and he, and he talked about how many remembers the Feast of the Sabbath years. Every seventh year, what did they do to the crops, the land? Anybody remember? Let it rest. Every seventh year, they let it rest. So they collected enough through the six years that on the seventh year, they just let the land rest. That makes good sense. You ask any, ask those corporate farmers how hard it is to keep their soil fertile when they raise crops every year. Huh? Are you with me? And one of the feasts, of course, was the Passover. How many remembers the Passover? And he said, this will be a feast, and you'll keep this every year at the same time, and that is the atonement. That is, that is the, the day of atonement. And, you know, that's when Christ was crucified at the Passover. How many remembers that? And then after the Passover, it's, it's 50, the 50th week. Are you listening to me? Or 50th days after the atonement. 50th day. How many members the year of Jubilee? You remember what the year of Jubilee was in the in the Old Testament? 49 years went by. What happened on the 50th year? Anybody remember? Everybody that was, that was an indentured servant or a slave or had lost the family property, it was all give back to them. And they went to go back to the farm. They got to get out of the indenture. Everything was clear. The debts were all paid every 50th year. And they called it Jubilee. They blew the silver trumpets. And all them guys laid their hose down. Hollered, whoopee. Hallelujah. Now this 50th day, Jesus was rose again. And he was seen of many for 40 days. You remember the scripture? All right. It was on the 50th day. The day of Pentecost. Now, it was a feast. It was declared a feast. It was called in the Old Testament, it was called the Feast of Weeks or Harvest. Are you with me? The weeks. And so, Pentecost, 50th. 
day after the atonement. And that's where this day of Pentecost. Now, now I don't think it's, I, I don't think it is, uh, uh, you know, the Bible said when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And you know the rest of this story. Amen. Now, I want you to go over to the book of uh, 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 Deuteronomy. I want to read this to you right here. Here is the original 16th chapter and verse number 10. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God with a tribute of a free will offering of thy hand, which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God according as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God Thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite that is within thy gate and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are among you in the place where the Lord thy God hath chosen to place his name there. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt and thou shalt observe to do these statutes. Now, praise God. I want you to understand that you can take your time and read that. I read it over several times. Amen. But that was the first uh, one that I read. Of course, Leviticus and then Deuteronomy repeated it. But that was the first Pentecost that I read about. You say, that was Pentecost? Yes, it was. Amen. And I want to preach to you, if you want to have a Pentecost, amen, here's what you do. Whoo! Here's what it said. He said, here's what I want you to do. Amen. And notice, notice first thing, the first thing that the whole purpose was, amen, was to thank God for his provision for the harvest. You see, the, the first fruits had already came and this, this was after it. Amen. And so he said, I want you to praise God. Oh, help me preach a little. You know what's happened to America? She got prosperous and fat. Amen. The Bible said Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Amen. And then she got in trouble. I don't know why it is, but when our stomachs get full, our head gets empty. I don't know how that is. Amen. But when, and I want, I want our young folk, I want to raise our kids with an appreciative attitude. If God blesses your parents, uh, and you, and you've got plenty, amen, take it humbly and go to God. And you, and when you kneel, amen, instead of just climbing in your bed with all your technology all around you, amen, and all those nice clothes in that closet and just pull the covers up around your head and say, I deserve every bit of this, amen, and I want some more come Christmas. I'll tell you what you need to do. You need to get on your little knees around that bed and say, God, I thank you I've got a home, a roof over my head. I thank you, amen, that I'm not I'm not lame in my feet. I thank you I can walk and breathe. And you may not believe this, but it's a privilege for you to go to school and learn. Amen. I know you don't feel like it is, but you ought to get on your knees and say, Lord, I thank you for the privilege, amen, to go to church and go to a Christian school and to learn, amen, and to be thankful and humble in this world. Am I preaching right or not? What's happened to this generation, Rebecca? Have we just been bad examples for you, honey? I don't know. Huh? I'll tell you what, amen. Our president, our president made his Thanksgiving speech and never mentioned God's name one time. Now you tell me how you can be thankful and not mention God's name. I don't believe it. He might, he, he might as well just, just got up and, and sang a rock song as far as I'm concerned. Huh? You leave God out of it? And I'm not, I'm not being critical. I, I, well, I guess I am. But I'm telling you, and that's the way, look, 
We've got a culture that's left God out. Amen. And we listen, listen, we we need to have a heart. Pentecost is that 50th day. And you and you know what it was? Uh, it was a day, and Brother Bob, I do not think, amen, that this was accidental. Amen. That it, that the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost. Uh, amen. It wasn't. Uh, are you listening to me? The Holy Ghost uh, didn't make Pentecost. Pentecost brought the Holy Ghost. Uh, are you listening to me? Preach. Uh, he said, I'm going to send the Comforter, and he shall come to you. He didn't come the first day he sent him back. Amen. It was ten days later. Amen. Are you listening to me? Uh, they were on the in the spirit uh, in one accord, uh, and it was the day of Pentecost, uh, the day when they thanked God, uh, Amen, for the corn crop uh, and the wheat crop, uh, Amen, in the grape vineyard, uh, and they thanked God, uh, Amen, for a place to roll out their cot and lay down. Uh, they were in that spirit uh, of thanksgiving uh, when the Holy Ghost fell. Am I right or not? Tell us. I'm going to preach to you ten more minutes here. Now listen to me. The first thing that, are you looking at that scripture 16 and 10? It said that they were to thank God for the provision. And notice what it said, Brother Kenny, in that it listed everybody in the house. Huh? There used to be an old book at the library. My, my kids loved it. Y'all's kids ever read McBroom? They had a bunch of kids. Did anybody read that carnal book to their kids besides me? Anybody ever hear of McBroom? He had a bunch of kids. Hester and Chester. What are, what are some more of them? Isaac? You're ignoring me, son. Twins, does he do you like that? Oh, he does? Okay, good, brother. Hester and Chester, Jill and, help me here, who else? Vester? Anyway, there's about eight kids. And when they go to calling their kids' names, they just call them. I thought about all the crew I got. Thanksgiving, we had 20. <laughs> One. I thought about calling them all, Sister Jane. You, I, I, the other day, I was trying to get the hang of it, and I, Keep leaving one out. Start with the oldest grandchild is Kyra. And then Kyra, Kaylee, Thomas, Graydon. Now you say, well, what? This, that, this is all the role that ought to praise the Lord. Are you listening? Huh? <laughs> Woo! What did it say in the 16th? They said, Brother Bob, it said it started out with all them people. What did it say? Are you, have I, Thou shalt rejoice before the Lord. Thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant. Hey, lady, as soon as you get this drink poured, you need to come back in here and rejoice with us. Go ahead. The Levite within the gate. The stranger, can you, can you see an old guy coming around, passing through? Hey, 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 come here, come here. What, what, what do I do, what do I do? Come here, come here, come here. What is it? It's the day of Pentecost. You're supposed to rejoice with me. Rejoice? Yeah, I'll make it worth your trouble now. Praise God. Just, just rejoice. Amen. Because we've, we got a field full of cattle. Amen. And we had a good grape crop. We got some Welch's grape juice on the table. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and we're all healthy. And all the kids are well. And it's time to rejoice. You rejoice with me. Well, okay. Praise the Lord. I can't even get my church to pay. Go ahead. Stranger. The fatherless. The widow that are among you. In the place that the Lord thy God has chosen to place his name there. I'm almost done with the first point. I'm like a barbed wire fence. I got several points this morning. Huh? Your provision. It's hard to get off of that. Amen. You know what? If we're not thankful, God commanded us to be. Now, here's the, the next thing he said, and remember that thou was what? 
And you're and you're in this on the day of Pentecost. I want you to remember not only what God has provided for you, but remember where He's brought you from. Boy, I wish somebody'd say Amen in here. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I'm telling you, if we're going to have a Pentecost like we need to have a Pentecost, we're going to have to thank God, Amen, from where He's brought us from. You know, nobody gets the baptism of the Holy Ghost that's not been born again, huh? I remember years ago, an old guy was drunk and came in to the service, and and he, I, you know, I was young. They always sick me on the guys praying. I was young and would just spit on them and shake them. And I come over to this old guy, and I was just shaking him, and and he looked at me and he said, "I want the Holy Ghost." And I looked over, Brother Bob. Brother Bob is a brilliant man. I don't know if y'all know that or not, but he's a brain. And I went, and he come over there, and he looked up at him, and I said, tell him what you told me. And he said, I want the Holy Ghost. And Brother Bob said, you can't have the Holy Ghost. You're drunk. And you need to ask God to save you and deliver you from this habit you got and these other things. But I don't want to do that. I don't want the Holy Ghost. You ain't getting the Holy Ghost. Huh? <laughs> All right, come on now. Now, I know some people think you get the Holy Ghost when you get saved. But you don't get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You get born of the Spirit. But you don't, you don't get the baptism. And you ain't going to get the baptism, amen, unless you've been brought out of Egypt. Somebody say amen. You've got to be out of bondage to get the Holy Ghost. Now listen, amen, in, in this little three-point exercise, uh, amen, in Thanksgiving Pentecost, uh, amen, the, you see, this was the original Pentecost. Amen, you understand what I'm talking about? And if we're going to have Pentecost tonight, when we come to this service, we're going to begin with thanking God, amen, for the blessings and grace and goodness that he's given. We didn't deserve it. I said we didn't deserve it. And then we got to be thankful, amen, that God went to extreme measures uh, to bring us out of Egypt. Uh, what extreme measures? Uh, in the Old Testament, uh, he put all the plagues, uh, and the firstborn in every family had to die, uh, amen. But in the New Testament, God sent his only begotten son. Uh, woo! Somebody say amen in this house. Uh, I'm preaching on Pentecost uh, and Thanksgiving. Uh, where has God brought us from? I close out my discourse on Pentecost Thanksgiving. Amen. I want us to think of this last point, and that is the provision, amen, the past, and the power. I'm going to tell you something. If we don't have the power, we're not going to survive. When the day the Pentecost was fully come, and I, I believe I've seen people get the Holy Ghost. Now I'm gonna tell you, I haven't seen a lot in the last few years, but I mean I have seen hundreds get the Holy Ghost in my Christian life, hundreds of them. I have. And everyone I ever saw get the Holy Ghost was worshiping God. I've never seen anybody come up there and say, Lord. I know you won't want to use me because of my talents and ability and good looks. Now, let me have that Holy Ghost. No, 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 no. You're going to come up humble. You hear me? I've seen people sit in church and you have to beg them, please, please get saved. Please go. Now, they're not going to get saved like that. They're going to get saved when they start saying please. Ain't that right? That's right. Amen. And I want to tell you, you're going to get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now you say, well, just go up there and ask for the Holy Ghost. You've got the wrong concept. You see, the Holy Ghost is a gift. Now, now naturally, you want your gift. It's just like Christmas. But you know, you've just got to believe God for it. And then you've just got to receive the gift. Hear me? And you receive it by worshiping and believing and thanking God and lifting up to you. When the Holy Ghost comes, do you know who he's going to magnify? You're going to be praising the Son of God when the Holy Ghost comes into you. Am I telling you right or not? Amen. And I tell you what, we're going to have a spiritual service. Now, I'm not, and you know I'm not an advocate of a dead, dry service. Now, you know that. We have our share, but I don't like them. Do you? Huh. And I'm not saying it has to be running and gunning the whole time to be a spiritual service. 
I can worship God on silent night. I've done it many, many times. Huh? Are you listening to me? And even them old worldly singers sing silent night and I cry. Oh, Elvis can sing that and it just about gets a hold of it. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. He ain't that good a singer. I mean, he ain't no singer now, but, you know. But I tell you, that old song still has a sweet thought to it. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is right. I tell you what, we need to get back to worshiping God. I tell you what we need. We need to call a Pentecost. Yes, they pray. Yeah, that's a hunger. You've got to have a hunger. Yes, you do. You've got to have a hunger. These people, amen, they went and tarried for, uh, he said tarry until, tarry until, you didn't do with power of them on high. And you know, if you tarry, you tarry here at the altar, we're, we're used to that like we did this morning. We're used to requ- prayer requests for 15 minutes, pray for 15 seconds. You know, we, you know, it's just human nature's got it turned around. You know, we've lost confidence nearly in praying. So, And the reason I know this because nobody prays anymore. But I tell you, we get our confidence back in praying. We can have, we can have Pentecost. You say, well, Pentecost is the power of God following people speaking in tongues. No, no, no. That comes after the Pentecost. The day of Pentecost came first. And that was a day of worshiping God for his provision for us and his, the past he brought us out of. And then the power came that we were looking for. That's how it's going to be. Can somebody say amen? Amen. How many got this little sermon here? Let's stand.